Hi, this is Pete Brown, and I'm here at that conference with Tim Miller from Skyline Technologies. How are you doing, Tim? Good. Great. So you have a really cool uh, Windows 8 app that started off uh, way back as a Silverlight uh, application, and you've recently done some porting of that yourself. Um, and it's a, a business application, yes. right? Yes, a line of business app. Uh, for viewing stock portfolios, I think? Yes. Well, it's a... It uses a simple moving averages formula to track trend analysis for stocks and to move your position within the stock. So instead of a, a buy and hold strategy, most people buy a stock and hold it for 10 years. This company has a strategy for you buy the stock, but over the 10 year period, you manage your position within the stock. Mm -hmm. So you're constantly watching the, the securities within your portfolio. And the big thing that you care about is when there's a recommendation change to change your position in the stock. Okay. And by position, we mean you, all your money's in it, but you might say a half position. So pull half your money out and wait. Okay. Or a cash position, pull all your money out and wait for a certain period of time. So your customer is who? Appleton Group. Appleton Group Wealth Management. All right, so um, Appleton Group Wealth Management, I think I got that right this time, uh, had you come in and port this app over or redo this app uh, yes. as a Windows 8 app? We originally wrote it for them in Silverlight, so okay. we, they've been a client of ours. Um, it's Silverlight with an Azure backend, so we already had the services model all set up, yep. and we said, well, this could be a great opportunity. He, he is now releasing it this summer to the public. Okay. It was not originally uh, available to the public, it now is. And we thought this would be a great marketing opportunity to put the app out, get it out to a lot of people. So this will be in the Windows Store? Yes, absolutely. Right? We're going to be publishing this month. And you said it's an Azure backend. Can you tell me just a little bit about that? Sure. Um, so it's a, we use Rio services with Silverlight. Um, so we've got our, our web roles out there running all of our services. We actually have worker roles working behind that that are doing the optimizations because you'll enter trend values for tracking the stock and to determine when you should change your position. And there are worker roles working in the background continuously, always optimizing these values and these numbers to determine what you should be doing. Great, so for the Windows 8 app, you're still using the same Azure backend and, yep. all right, cool, Good. so let's take a look. Okay. So this, is this one of the, the build slates? Is that what this is? Or is this a different no, slate? No, this is uh, the production Series 7 slate. So I bought okay. this shortly after build when they were released. So this is an X86-64 uh, you know, uh, processor in yep, here. Core right? i5 dual. Yep. Um, but everything you're going to show us here is using XAML and C Sharp, right? So yep. this would also work on ARM devices and... Yep, uh, and absolutely. This, right. is, this is full Metro. All right. All right. So here's the app. All right, so we got we have a welcome screen. Kind of des describes what the app is. Um, we wanted to draw people in, so we kind of have the welcome. You log in, sign up. But if you're a guest, you can actually go in and start looking at the various securities that are being tracked. Mm -hmm. um, so you can do this actually just as a guest. You so a little bit of a teaser. Yeah. Yep. So we can jump in on Amazon, and we have slow Wi-Fi here at the conference. <laughs> yes. Sorry about that. <laughs> Um, but this shows you right down here, you can see, if you had bought and held Amazon from inception, you'd have $5 million now. If you had bought $100,000, so that'd be great. However, using Appleton Group's formula, you'd have $97 million. And actually, it's an amazing number of stocks that actually have this kind of return. Wow. Um, so here's our growth chart. You can see there's information you can't see here because you're a guest. If you log in, if you sign up and log in, then you get more information here. Okay. You get calendar year return, but you can't see past trade history. However, you can also play around with this uh, in using the app bar. We have this timeline graph up above, and you can switch the view. So this is fit to screen. We can switch to year, which kind of expands it out a little bit. So you have an app bar, and it's got a graph up there in the app bar, and you're using that as a visual way of uh, filtering or constraining the data that you're working with? Yep, absolutely. That's really cool. I have not seen an app bar that had that rich of a control in it. I mean, most of us tend to think of app bars as, you know, just a couple of buttons in here, right? But I think especially for business applications, there's a lot of opportunity to take, you know, things that we might have had in like little pop-up dialogues or yep. filter screens or flyouts and put them right up there as, as part of the interaction. Yeah, we consider, it, we consider it basically kind of a secondary interaction, but there's continuous interaction with the app bar. So right. it's what you refer to as a sticky app bar. It's not easily dismissible. Yep. I actually, if I touch somewhere else in the screen, it stays on. I actually have to forcibly make it go away. Yep. That way I can interact with it. But if I select these periods, then the graph below changes. And now I can go in and see 
my cumulative return for that time period. Did you guys create the graphing yeah. controls yeah. and stuff yourself, or is that somebody else's? Or no, we actually we did it from scratch. When we did the Silverlight app, we used Telerex graphing controls. Yeah, um, but now that those weren't available when we first started doing this development. Right. So this is basically just a canvas with a point collection, and I'm drawing out the points. Right. So, but it performs really well. Yeah, so that's actually one, that. Yeah. One nice thing is that basically as quickly as I can touch these, it changes. Yeah. There's no delay, which is very nice. Yeah, we had d some delay within the Silverlight app, but there's none here. Yeah, great. And you'd mentioned that um, this is mostly like you're um, doing research and, and kind of mining data and stuff at this point. Is there any data entry in this application? or? Yes, there is. Um, if we actually log in. Doo -doo -doo. Here, I'll just <laughs> log in for go. a second there. <laughs> That way we don't have all the people watching this figuring out your password. There we go. All right. So this is the portfolio we're currently tracking as a as a test user. So if we jump into Microsoft. Again, this takes a second to load. Mm -hmm. And you can see 11 million versus 33 million. Clearly, I have not been doing the right thing with stocks here. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I have those thoughts too. <laughs> But, um, sorry. So you see more information here. You actually get the closing price and right. your current positioning. Right. Um, also, one other thing that appears is your SMA values. And these are yep. simple moving averages. These are the values that determine what you should be doing with the stock. And so that's one thing you can change. So you can switch to track, the continuous optimize. This is what Azure is tracking nightly. Okay. Looking at all the market values. There's a locked in optimize, and then you can change and add your own user to find. Because Mark will be, Appleton Group will be selling this to investors as well that will use this. Yes. So that's the one data entry point. Okay. It is cool. really that. And then I see you've got uh, scrolling to the right. Like, how did you do, like, call that continuous scrolling? Like, what's technically, what do you have beside, behind the scenes here to, to it's do? It's just the default scroll viewer. Just I didn't really have to do anything other than that. Okay. And then I've got a, a stack panel. Um, set the orientation horizontal and just dropped all my controls in. And it's really smooth. You're getting that directly yeah. from the scroll viewer, yeah? Yep. This, hopefully, it plays out in the video, but it's very, very smooth. Basically, as quick as you want to move, it moves. Great, great. Well, that's a, a really cool app. So who designed the UI and stuff for this? Uh, actually, I did. I mean, we kind of pulled from the Silverlight app, but... Um, really going through the metro design and following those principles, uh, that was me working with that. Excellent. And it's a really beautiful app, I have to say. I love the way that looks. Uh, I love how fast and how smooth that is. I'm not going to say fast and fluid. Um, I, I really do like that. I think you know, we don't see an awful lot of business apps right now because folks are having like a difficult time visualizing what a business app would be like in a mm -hmm. tablet world, right? And I think this is an excellent example of you know, a use case where somebody would really want to have this on a tablet to quickly look at stuff and, and be able to do the research for. So great job on that. Um, and uh, I hope to see lots of other cool apps from you in the future. Thank you. Thank you.